You are watching this recorded broadcast by Resurrection and the Life Tanzania by Joseph Kwajima, Senior Pastor and Bishop of Glory of Christ Tanzania Church. GCTC is the largest mega church in East Africa with a congregation of over 70,000 strong. Join us today and experience the resurrection power of Christ as He raises the dead, heals the sick, and liberates every captive. Our sermon today is entitled, Demons Amongst the Generations of Men. Amongst the generations of men. Repeat again, demons in the midst of the generations of men. Father, before the foundation of the earth, you purchased people who you'd taken from various generations and nations to sing your name forever. Lord, may your praise be unceasing in this household and in other households. May you be exalted by all people. May you be glorified by all people. May you be blessed by all people. May you be worshipped by all. And all creation, let it exalt you as the God of all, Father of all, the beginning and the end, who was, who is, and who is to come forever. I thank you because these are the times when you want to walk on, upon the earth and to give us understanding. I bless you and I honor you. Thank you for today. You will show us demons among the generations of men. And everybody says amen. Tell your neighbor demons in the midst of the generations of men. I ask now that you would permit me to read certain scriptures and then we'll continue with our sermon, Demons Amongst the Generations of Man. I will read from the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. I'm reading in the name of Jesus. And I will put animosity between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise its heel. These are the words which God the Father, not Jesus Christ, is telling that, that woman. He said to the woman that, after Adam and Eve had committed sin, they had eaten the fruit of the tree which the Lord had told them not to eat, and now God came down, and God said to them, Adam, he said, I will put animosity between the seed of Adam and the seed of the serpent. The seed of Adam, the seed of the woman will crush your head and the seed and the seed of the snake will 
The seed of the woman will crush your head and you will bruise its heel. Here God is showing us two things. He shows us that there is a generation, a seed of a woman, that is someone who is born of a woman as you were born or as I was born. And then he shows us that there is a seed of the serpent. There are those who are born of the serpent. So now, here, a person with just the general uh, education, the seed of the woman here, it means Jesus, who was later born of a woman without a man. But also, in other words, it also refers to all people who are saved, for there is none alive today who is not born by woman. If you saw someone alive today, it's that they have their mother, even if they know not their father, but they must have their mother. So there are generations, there are seed, there are those who are born of women like you and I, and there are those who are born of the serpent, the generations of the serpent. So now listen to me very carefully now. Other people, when they enter into this normal theology, they think that, you know, this was a serpent, they were a physical snake, and this was a woman, a physical woman. So therefore, when he said, those who are born of the woman, he meant that when Jesus was born, and when he said, those who were born of the serpent, he meant that, that the serpent continued to uh, reproduce. But what he means is that the generations of the serpents, which are all demons who follow Satan, these are physical serpents. And the seed of the woman, of course, is Jesus Christ himself and all the living people. And from this thing, we've concluded two things. There are the seed of the women, human beings like you and I, and they're the seed of the serpent. Of course, this word, the seed of the women, if you look at it in the Bible, in Hebrew, it, it translates to Shiloh. Shiloh means a person who is born of a woman in the absence of a man, which is Jesus himself. But the point which we are creating here is that there are generations, or there are seed, who, which are born of the snake, the serpent. And there are those who are born of the woman. And when you see a donkey with a, with a cult, that cult, you call it a cult or a donkey. And when you see a lizard with a child, that offspring of theirs is called also a lizard. So here we say, the generations or the seed of a serpent are also serpents. It means that the offspring of Satan are also demons. So here we begin to discover certain things from the Bible. You remember Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, when he was speaking with people who were crooked, he called them serpents and the sons of serpents. Let's look at Jesus himself. When he was speaking to people who were crooked, he did not refer to them as human beings. He referred to them as demons. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. I have good news to inform you that tomorrow a helicopter will come out at about 11 a.m. in the morning. Clap unto the Lord. Because I, I have been overwhelmed by the ability of God and I forgot even to share this good news because I've got other good news even better than those. Many people say in the world that the enemy of your prosperity is the prosperity of the previous week. We are resurrection and the life. The rejoicing of the former week and Sunday, they have passed again. We look ahead to other things today and in days to come. And every day, God brings us new things. You know, God is like a river which flows. When you hear somebody who has been told of the revival of uh, years past there at Kiela, God is new every day. What happened yesterday is the past tense. We are looking at what God can do today. We are also looking at what God can do tomorrow. God is not God of the past tense. He uses the former things to push us into our future, but we do not rely on former things. We look ahead to the steps and the progress that we are taking. These are those which come from the Lord. I want to encourage you that tomorrow, the chopper would be out and anything can take place. Clap unto the Lord. 
You remember very well, I told people 18 years ago, I had a dream, and I hadn't even thought about the chopper. I was told in the, in the dream that God wants to shake this country, and I was told that the pillars have already been established, and the foundation is established, and I was told that two things are left remaining. 12 years ago, the helicopter and the catastrophe, I begin to say now, what is this catastrophe? He said to me, this catastrophe is that which you know. I'm telling you today and I want for your ears to become unplugged there is something which will come to pass that on the outside it would look like it will has ruined the world but on the inside that is where God will come out and he will walk and he will bring solutions to the world which is missed out on solutions he will bring decisions to the world which has lost out on decisions you know the pride of man is that which causes man to abandon God man when they eat and they become full they drink and become drunk and they sing songs and they worship other gods. You see, all people when they prosper and they have a good life, that is where they begin to abandon the Lord. You remember very well, there in Europe in the first century, that is where there was the revival. When we read the book of Philippians, that is Europe, Greece. Fortunately, I've been there to preach. When we read the book of Thessalonians, that is Europe. I have preached there. When we read the book of the Corinthians, that is Europe. When we read the book of the Ephesians, that is Europe. That's a place where the fire of God has passed even in the first century. But after the great explosion of um, industrial trade, people came to Africa to take raw materials. They expanded their factories. They began to have their wine and they got drunk and they ate their food and they began to develop their machinery. They became full and they saw that there was no God. And that is one of the places where God now is not worshipped by people who go to church. They are the elderly people themselves. But God is like that. He set Africa that it should not prosper much so that the people People will not abandon the Lord. The Lord has put Africans that they have, they are zealous to pray, even though they look like they do not come out of the hardship of their livelihoods. But I want to tell you that Africa is as it is because God has reserved the Africans for the revival which is coming, for the coming rain for the showers of blessing which are to come, for the resurrection which is to come. Africa is the pillar of men and women who will be set by God to go throughout the world. They will shake the world by, the, by a great power. And I'm telling you that if you hear this voice, hear these words, and God, the Father of our glory, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let him unplug your ears and let him open your heart that you will know that the hour is coming and the, and the hour is that those who are in the graves, they will hear the voice of the son of Adam and they will come out of their graves. Others by life and others for unto destruction. And these are the times which the Lord has said, I will walk and I'll visit Tanzania in a great way. And I'm saying again, I don't know what catastrophe this will be or where it will happen or how it will begin or who will bring it but I know one thing God will come out crawling from the nations of Africa from Tanzania he will crawl, he will go he will rise, he will stand he will come out as the rain of hail, he will come out as a river which has been directed by the birth of God he will come out as a mighty man who is able to stand, he will come out as the power of God amongst men and that is when people will see and they will say God is our banner and he is our mighty man and he is the one whom we have waited for and on the truth we have seen his salvation this is the hour of resurrection and the life in the world hallelujah it is the voice in the wilderness therefore there are people who do not know I've just given you a small sample so that you would see that which is coming. Let us look at this thing from the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 33. Matthew, chapter 23, verse 33. These words, Jesus Christ was speaking with the people. If I begin at verse 29, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous. 
saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus, you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. Verse 33, You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Repeat these words, you serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? This thing can amaze one greatly. God, Jesus, he knows who Satan is. Today, he has decided to call people whom he himself created. He says, you are serpents. Not just serpents. And those who um, you have descended from are serpents. You are possessed of serpents. And your forefathers who you descended from are serpents. He said, you are a serpent. And the one whom you descended from is a serpent. This amazes one a lot. If Jesus was here, I would ask him, Jesus, Lord Jesus, how could it be that the very ones you yourself created, how can you call them serpents? Why is it like you are disgracing yourself because you are the one who created? How could it be that if they're, po if they're possessed, have we not seen you cast out demons? Why can't you cast them out? If they are filled with demons, why can't you drive them out? But Jesus meant, did not mean that these are human beings who are filled with demons. He said, these are not people. You see them as people, but not. They are not. He said, that these are serpents and the ones which they have descended from are serpents. In other words, these are demons and the ones whom they have descended from are demons. But they come across as human beings so that you will be deceived when you contend with them that you think you are condemning with human beings. When you're speaking with them, you would think you're speaking with human beings. When you, when you engage with them, you think you're engaging with human beings, but they are not human beings. They are serpents. They are demons. They have mixed themselves with the generations of mankind. And that's why I've decided today, I want to discern these serpents who have mixed themselves. I want to discern against these demons who have mixed themselves in your family, the genies which live in your family, in the nation of Tanzania, who have taken leadership, who have taken managerial positions, who have taken wealth. We want to discern them and separate them that they should depart from the nation. This is the hour of the resurrection and the life in the world. Somebody say Amen! You see Jesus there, as if it was not enough. Jesus there, it was insufficient. He called those he had created as serpents. He called them serpents. One person, amongst those who were raised from the dead and was brought back from spiritual captivity, he said, he said, you people here on earth, I'm so amazed at you. You think that every person you come across is a human being. Most of those that you see are not human beings, but they've taken on human form that they should work their works. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, it is written, And when he saw many amongst the midst of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, when they came to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who has warned you that you should flee from the wrath to come? It amazes. Instead of Jesus rejoicing at these people repenting, there's a place where he says, how will you dodge the coming judgment? He tries to show them that these are not supposed to be saved because they are demons by nature. They're not supposed to be saved. But what he was meaning is that he was sending the message that when you see at a certain place people are sitting, they're those you see as human beings, but by nature they are not people. As I'm speaking as such, some of you might feel as if anger, frustration begins to come forth, as if you're getting mad. Why is he speaking these things? You must know that you, you are my target today. You are the one who my missile will come upon right there where you are. When you're feeling as if you're being annoyed, frustrated, it doesn't mean that he's saying that there's some human beings who are not human beings. Does it mean that what he's saying is that there are people who are not people? Does it mean that he wants to establish even strange things between us so that which we could look at our uncles, our aunties with two eyes? 
eyes, double vision. If you feel like that, you must know that you are my target today. The bomb will come upon you today. You are the one who's who's the the one who'll be beaten today. You're the one who'll be smitten today. You're the one who'll be hurt today. Because I sworn unto the Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, the generations of demons, the generations of genies, which appears as mankind, which brings problems in your family, into your marriage, to your office, to the nation of Tanzania. We want to discern in today. Authority we have, ability we have, power we have, we will begin and we will finish. Those who love the Lord, lift your umbrellas up. Hallelujah! You see Jesus here. As if that was not enough. Verse 12 of Matthew chapter 12. Verse 32. Let's begin at verse 34. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. Jesus is repeating again. You brood of vipers. How can you speak good when you are evil? Here he's saying that there's a lion which eats people in the forest, in the jungle, and he says, I love you. Jesus here is saying there's no such thing as that. You are a man-eating lion. How can you say that you love me? That is why Jesus is amazed with here. Jesus is not being amazed at man, that this man is evil. No. He knows you are not a person you. How can you begin to say now we are the generations of Abraham? We are Pharisees. It's the same as finding a cobra hiding and lifted up their neck and ready to strike. And they're saying, hello, I love you. You'll say, you, by your nature, you are a snake. How can you speak good things today? And I am saying, they have spoken good so that we should think they're human beings. They have performed good things so we should think they're human beings. But we are rooting the goodliness even of Zaytans of demons to blind our minds. We burst it. We disperse it. We break it. We scatter it abroad. We bring it down and return them to their nature. Let them go back to their true nature. Say Amen. There's someone here saying, how shall it be? If these things are being spoken out in the fields, I'm saying this. Yet, we are just climbing the mountain to enter into the truth of these things. And your eyes will see these, and your ears will hear these, and you will know that God reigns amongst men. Somebody say, Amen! Luke, chapter 3, verse 7. And then he said to the multitudes of those who went to him so he should baptize them. He said, you brood of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the rules to come? You see, he continued to call them the generation of vipers. So we get this particular picture that amongst mankind, human beings that you see, that there are those who are not human beings. There are demons who have taken on the bodies of men. Jesus has told us of this. I want you to listen to me carefully. And I want you to understand this concept. It must sink within your mind and within your heart. And, and listen to me very carefully. The latter days which we are heading to, there are three things that will come to pass. As we are going toward the latter days, there are three things that will come to pass. Firstly, Christianity of those who use the people of God will increase. For example, five years ago, or six years ago, or ten years ago, this force, this army was not here. But as the years go by, that is how people who have the ability to scatter Satan abroad are increasing. One Christian person of resurrection and the life can put to flight 1,000 demons and two can put to flight 10,000 demons. So if we are 70,000 over here, just look at the ratio. How many demons can we put to flight? The body of Christ is expanding everywhere throughout the world. And as the body of Christ expands, that is how many spiritual missiles are being launched in the spiritual realm. The caves of darkness, the pits of darkness, hell, mountains, the forests of darkness, the jungles of darkness, the streams of darkness are being attacked in the spiritual realm. What happens now is that Satan discerns. He says, oh, 
They've already discerned that I live in the spiritual realm. He now transfers from the spiritual realm and he enters into the physical realm. So that when you launch your missile into the spiritual realm, that he won't be there. Is, but he is your neighbor who lives near you that is that Satan that used to live in hell he tells you now we do not miss out on discerning his devices we pursue them wherever they are be in the pit we'll smite them where at somebody's house they'll be beaten be they in the heavenlies they'll be beaten be they in hell they will be beaten be they in the government they will beat them be they in the parliament we will beat them be they in the church they'll be beaten be you in the mosque you'll be beaten destroy destroy all the way to the foundation Amen, 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 hallelujah, lift up your umbrella and say hallelujah, tell your neighbor, today is today, this is the hour which I've waited for, shout and say amen. That first step. They relocate from the spiritual realm. They relocate to the physical realm. And that is called the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a human being who will receive power from the dragon and relocate from the physical realm into the spiritual realm. And will relocate from the spiritual realm and enter into the physical realm. It's a human being. A human being. But because you've already formally known that I enter into the spiritual realm, I make war against those who rule in the heavenlies. But the one who rules the heavenlies is not in the spiritual realm. They live at Ndezi Beach, at Masaki. They live at Makondeko. So now, do not just enter into the spiritual realm. Also, begin to walk into people's houses. You say, in the name of Jesus, I enter into every house in Masaki, in the physical realm. If they have come in the flesh, let them come against me even in the flesh. If they've come against me in the spirit, let us meet also in the spirit. Yes, yeah, that is, it's face to face, eye to eye, tooth to tooth, even as Jesus himself had said. You will discern that you will no longer be bewitched. It's not that you are bewitched, but it's the one who does these things to you, you live with them. I'll show you later how it is that demons who have entered amongst the generations of men, how they work. For people are just used to one way, that we just bind them in the spiritual realm and that is enough. But some are not in the spirit. Others, you live with them. So firstly, what takes place in the spiritual realm and that many attacks have been thrown and launched into the spiritual realm Satan transforms from being a demon a genie and becomes a person they become dragon, a, a serpent a brood of vipers they become a person and because you have no problem with people they come to you and they approach and say let's do business together it's a person they come after you and they say let's get engaged I remember my daughter who stood here. She said, Auntie, I've come across a man who has everything. Satan, when he comes out from the spiritual realm and takes on human form, he has everything. Everything which you desire is there. If you desire a house, he has. If you desire a car, he has. Why does he have them? Because a genie can transform himself to be a house. A genie can transform himself to be a vehicle. That he has everything. And so now you just enter head first. And you look and you say, oh, he has everything. You are trapped. You begin to have children. And these are an offspring of darkness. You give birth to that which is half human, half spirit. If you understand me, lift your umbrella and say amen. Bring your umbrella down. That is the first point. That they translate their operations. They relocate them from the spiritual realm and they enter into the physical realm. That is why Jesus said, Beloved, the Antichrist who is to come on the earth has already come upon the earth. He shows there is the one who is to come. Secondly, secondly that which is to come to pass in the latter days is that Satan is keen on ruling the nations. I'm repeating again, Satan is bent on ruling the nations so that he should prepare the way for the Antichrist 
who is to come for the new world order, for the new world order, also known as the Luciferic Kingdom. Listen carefully. That is these demons. They take on bodily form. They become human beings. They begin to capture the nation. They become presidents. They become ministers, not just in Tanzania, the world over. They become leaders so that they should capture the nations of the world and prepare the way for the Antichrist. Because when the Antichrist comes, he will be a politician, he will be an economist, he will be an educated person who has the ability to speak educated things, economic things, but it's Satan who's taken on human form and he will rule over the world and he will bring all male and female children, the young, so that they should be stamped with the number triple six. But for your information, the church of Jesus Christ, we will already be raptured and in heaven, we will be with the Lord Jesus, we will be there in heaven, we will know him as he is. And this is the hope of the saints, that one day, before the world has come under Satan, 100%, while these things are taking place, that is when the rapture will take place. What is the rapture? For those of you who are new to the Bible, the rapture is that which we are anticipating at any time, in the twinkle of an eye. The trumpet will sound. It means that the sound will be heard in the spiritual realm and those alone who are saved will hear it. And when they hear it, they will see Jesus in the sky. He will come to have taken his people. And that is when those who have died in Christ will be raised first. And those of us who are living will be transformed immediately, taking, taking off the body of corruption, putting on incorruption, and ascending up high. We'll be raptured, we'll be carried, we will go immediately, all the way to heaven, to our eternal home. But here on earth, that is when the great struggle will begin and the kingdom of the Antichrist will begin 100%. You will not sell, you will not buy until you have the number triple six. The preparations that you see here on earth are the preparations for the Antichrist. Demons become people. They take on leadership roles. They begin to have human form. These are their preparations. But their time is yet. We send them back to where they've come from until Tanzania is first saved, until Africa is saved first. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor, prepare yourself. There is something which is coming amongst men. If you believe that, umbrellas up. demons amongst the generations of men. Listen to me carefully. Therefore, that will come to pass. I said, firstly, demons will take on bodily form. They come into the earth as human beings. Later, I will show you what you are to do to know their devices. Secondly, I said that these demons, they begin to take world leadership roles. Roles. They begin to possess them. Let me give you one good example. Listen carefully. You look as if it, it looks as if it's political, but that's just how it is. We mix them all together and we move forward. The Americans, when they were at their last election, as you know, in the United States, there are two great political parties. There's the Democratic Party, and there are the Republicans. And during the nomination process of the Republicans, they selected a man by the name of Governor Romney. And during the nomination of the De Democratic Party, they selected Obama, who is the current president. These two were the chief nominees. The Americans were not able to select between the two that they were to choose between a man-eating lion and a man-eating leopard. They entered into a very difficult time. Why? Because Governor Romney, he is the chief Mormon authority. Mormonism is the church which is called uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, which is located at Morocco in Dar es Salaam, which the church is Freemasonry. Freemasonry. I can even prove this in the courts. This is Freemasonry. 
And now that Governor Romney, he was the chief Mormon authority of that church, which is demons. That is Satan himself. But he's the one contending for the presidency. The Americans looked at him and said, let's go back to Obama. When they look at Obama, he himself, Obama says, it is fine for a woman to marry her fellow woman and for a man to marry his fellow man. The Americans were there at the crossroads. Who to choose? A man eating lion or a man eating leopard? That as far as the world develops, it prepares itself such that during the elections, you find it hard to choose. Satan has already prepared for himself such that if you look on this side, it's a reptile of the kind of a cobra. If you look on the left, it's a reptile on the kind of a crocodile. If you look here, it's a reptile of the kind of a python. You ask yourself, should I choose a python? You choose those who will devour slowly and those who will devour quickly. And that is why the people of God, I want to encourage you, enter into politics. If you see somewhere where your call is in politics, enter therein. Go into the local level government. Go into being a counselor. Go into a local level government. Even into governor. Being even the minister, a president. So that when it comes to voting, we will choose between a cobra and a sheep. Clap into the Lord because of that. Amen. 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 These things, they are true indeed. Those who are swelling and beginning to take a gaze at me, tell them to burst. Things are going just as they have been planned. Business is continuing as it has been planned. Burst. You can burst if you cannot comprehend. If you cannot comprehend this, the words which I'm speaking, you can burst. Two, swell up is not enough. There are those who swelled as you are, and later they diffused. Look at your neighbor in the face and tell them hello tell them is it you look at them closely even in the face and tell them look at me and then tell them burst if this is offending you if they have not blown up they are one of us if you see them frowning you must know that they are those who are performing an operation on without anesthesia they will burst within a short period of time you see therefore the world is being prepared as in Japan in a particular city called Hokkaido as I was preaching during the time of the election there was an American who was there in America he began to cry and say pastor pastor we have no one to choose we have no one to choose we're choosing between a bear and a cheetah I said to him, yes, that's how it is. The world is being prepared as such. The serpents are coming out from hell and becoming human beings. They are human beings indeed. They are politicians indeed. They have children. Why? Because hell is being beaten much. If you had eyes to see hell, you would see how it's been beat up by the missiles of resurrection. It's been beaten up badly. Satan cannot remain there anymore. Those who love Jesus say Amen. If you dispute with me, ask the witches. Ask the witches. People used to say this cow in which we are located in was a cow that what Chawi that the witches had. People used to say about us that if we remained here, that the witches of this place would remove us. We've put our feet in this place. Five years later, we're continuing. The witches, they have bowed down. They have bowed their knees. They have fallen upon their noses. Blood. They've been shedding blood. Their teeth have been uprooted. Their ears have been cut. Their eardrums have been burst. And we continue to step and blaze ahead forward, 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 until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of the Lamb. Those who love Jesus, stand and say, Amen, Amen, Amen. I ask you to take your seats. Yes! Those are two things. The third thing, I told you firstly, that Satan relocates from the spiritual realm. He enters into the physical realm. He becomes a person. Genies become people. Dragons become people. Ancestral spirits become people. Thirdly, Throughout the world, demons are bent 
on capturing the global powers so that they will rule over the ruling powers of man and they should possess the possessions of man. And that is what they're bent on. This is whom Jesus said of, you are demons. Thirdly, while Satan is doing the former two things, that genies and demons and ancestral spirits are translating into the physical realm and they become mankind so that they should rule and take the, the leadership of man. God also in the spiritual realm he knows that already Satan is at work in the flesh, in the physical realm. God also, he reveals his people, the people from heaven who have been sent by the Lord, they also, they begin to be revealed in the physical realm so that we can all meet the people of God and the people of Satan in the physical realm that we should fight it out right here on the earth. And that is why Jesus was called God together with man, with us. The false prophet also, the Antichrist, also he wants to say that he is Satan together with man. Jesus is God together with man. And that is why, hey, there will be a revelation, a manifestation which is not ordinary of the flesh. In the days which are before us, I want you to listen to these because you will be alive. There's nothing which I've told you that will come to pass, and it did not come to pass. I told you at the time when we were based at Ubungo to use the man of God while this time still is. I'm telling you again that we are relocating to another level. It's a national level, it's an African continental level, and then later on a global level. I'm telling you, use the resident pastors while they're still available. Use the ministerial pastors while they're still available. Use the associate pastors and the shepherds while they're still available because the time is coming and the time is. The person that you see today, you will not see them again. They will travel throughout the whole world, every place, for the sake of the work of the Lord. If you believe that you will be a partaker, say, I will be a partaker. You will see these things come to pass. While genies become young women and study at Kisutu Secondary School while ancestral spirits become the minister of defense while serpents and dragons are becoming pastors or an imam on the other side, God's side, God knows that the battle has shifted from the spiritual realm. That is the scriptures which he's using now when he says, there was a person who was sent from God and his name, he has a name. You see, you, in fact, you can see a person, but they have been sent from God. But their name is Mongela. They have a name. Not every person who has a name is born of man. Others have come from above. They've been born of God. But when you see them, they're also human beings. They speak with you. They eat pilau. They eat rice. They drive cars. But not so. But they have been set apart by God for particular hours. So that the demons who will take on human form and become human beings, you'll be amazed that you come up against other people who are human beings. But when they speak in tongues, they speak like a machine in the spiritual, sh in the spiritual realm. All the works of Satan are being devoured and destroyed. And I ask that Lord will quicken you who's hearing me, you who's sleeping, may the Lord wake you up. It's you who's sleeping, may the Lord stir you up in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. I said that as a third point. That while the world, Satan, you know, do not be afraid of witches anymore. Witches, we already defeated them. It's the demons now. The devil becomes a person. A genie is being enchanted upon. They become a woman who works at Vodacom. She asks for a job. She applies for a job. You go there to Vodacom. And you ask them, can you please renew my SIM card? It knows that I'm that it's a genie and it works as a person. It says, I love you and I love you too. It's returned. You begin to be close. And then you begin to complain and say, Pastor, you know, my life was very good. One day, I met with a particular young woman at Vodacom. Was she even a woman? 
fantastic. As you see me, there's a particular young man. We were engaged. Are you certain that he was a young man? Pastor, as you see me, you know, there's a particular young man we used to study together in Iringa. When we were in Iringa there, are you sure that he was a person, a young man? That same person that you were beating and cutting and axing and destroying in the spiritual realm, he saw that in the spiritual realm you have overtaken him, so he take on a human form and he built a house next to you. His work is to pressure you daily. His work is to throw rubbish even into your plot. He was the landlord that you should go and rent. And when you pray, Father God, you, he tells you, please be quiet, we are Muslim. And he gives you notice. So that means everywhere you go, you get a notice. And that's why God is saying, he's waking up your spirit, that you should enter into prosperity, that you should build your own house, that you should buy your own car in the name of Jesus. Say, Amen! You, you're hurt. And you say, Pastor, as you see me, my boss, he has favor. He's, he's not a boss. He's not a person. Do not deal with him as you deal with human beings. He's not a human being. I told you one particular day, one particular father of the house, the landlord, the landlord, his wife worships here, resurrection and the life. He said, they were selling pictures at the church of the senior pastor of the church. And this woman thought to herself, why don't I purchase a picture and take it home? It's of my pastor, why not? So she placed it there in her house. One day her husband was going down the stairs and that picture was put along the stairway. And her husband took off fast. He began to run. He said to his wife, remove that picture. And she asked him why. He said, because it came off the wall, it became a person and it began to pursue me. He was chased by a picture. It means that that is not a person. That's not a person. Uh, there's something beyond their humanity. Do not see someone hitting at you. They are stirring up fire against you. Do not think this young man, this man, this woman, this neighbor. Why are they pressing on me? Why? It's not a young man. It's not a young woman. That person is not just a neighbor. They are an angel who's taken on bodily form. And that is why you also put on the face of the Lord. Put on the face of the Lord. Put on the nature of God. Put on the words of God. Put on the ability of the Lord. Those who agree with me, wave your hands in the air and say, Amen! Amen! You see, you see that you you feel that it's your brother who's attacking you. You know that it's your father who's giving you disability, but it's not him. You know that it's this man who's giving you pregnancy and he's run away. It's not him. It's a dragon. It came from hell. Knowing that you say that you'll not be able to get married until you come across a rich man, then you aha. Let's create a dragon which has money to go and live there at Mananyamala. So it was created, a dragon which has more than enough money, and there at Mananyamala he is. You come out from church, there you go, and there at church you're calling the single man, come forth, and that man presents himself. You do not look at the spiritual things. You look at the physical things, material things. You look at what he has so that you can't find him agreeable. You look at how many houses he has so that you should find him agreeable. You'll be devoured. They do not look at those things. If you want the truth, look at a person and how they speak. If I was you, I would look at this person as a spiritual machine, be it that they have a house or no house, but they are sitting right with the Lord. They walk with the Lord. Those who have the Lord have everything in their future. Let me give you an example. If you're given a gift of an egg and the, egg, and the gift of a chicken, which one would you prefer? Or those who ate chips, chicken and those who ate chips with an egg who ate more I see that those who had the chips and the egg because they ate even the feathers 
They ate even the feces of the droppings of the chicken. They ate even the chicken's head. They ate even the chicken feet. That's how I see it. Because a chicken, within it, it has feathers. You do not eat their intestines. If you eat a chicken, you do not eat the intestines. But if you eat the egg, you eat even the intestines. If you eat a chicken, you do not eat the chicken's droppings. But if you eat the egg, you swipe even the droppings of the chicken. Even that. If you ask for chicken and chips, are you not even given one leg? But those who eat the egg eat the whole chicken. But by nature, if you see an egg, that is not the chicken. It requires 21 days. It's been laid on by the chicken. It has been laid on. It is laid on. It is laid on. After a while, a chicken hatches out. You give time to that chick. Four or five weeks. And later on, the cock will crow, but it originated from that egg. And even somebody who has God, who has no wealth, is the same as, as an egg. You see a young man, he's exhausted, he's worn out, but he's an egg. It has feathers. It has giblets on the inside. It has intestines. It has a head. It has nails. It has everything. And that is where... You have to be able to see ahead, see the future, and see potential. See the future, and see the potential. My wife and I often joke, while I was about to marry her, I had a one-unit house. The house itself, the unit. When I was starting the church there in Musoma, this man, Pastor Kamze, was there. I lived with ten other people, these men whom I was supporting, Benson, Christopher, Kadogo, and the others. I was living, supporting these 10 people in my house. And that's when I was getting engaged. And my partner, I said to her, come and see where I live. You must know that here, this is it. But Grace, she looked into that room. Firstly, she saw a helicopter in that bedroom. You understand me now? She would look into the room, she saw a helicopter. She would look into the room and see a Hummer inside that, that room. She would look into the room and she would see a preacher inside who was squished, squashed into an egg, waiting for 21 days. After the 21 days, that is what you see today. Have the ability to see ahead. See ahead. Look into the future. I'm telling you the truth. I'm staying here. And those young men, 10 people that I lived with, they were exhausted. There was no mattress, there was a carpet, there was a mat. People were saying to you, you are educated but you're living like this. I said to them, this is an egg. Where you see me, I am pregnant. I am pregnant with a mega church. They said to me, where is the mega church? I used to say to them, why is it when somebody's pregnant, will, some, will you see the baby? But they are there, and me, as I am, I am an egg. And I said to them, look with the eyes of the future, not eyes of today. Look with the eyes of God. Do not use the vision of man. Say amen. You see, hey, in that one unit room and with those young men, we used to cook with cow dung there in Musoma. We used to rouse together the cow dung. And then you set it alight. That which is dried, of course, the dried feces. And after you've mixed your porridge, when you first drink it, it smells like cow dung. You drink it, pop. I remember one particular pastor who has already been called by the Lord. His name is called Pastor Kisonga. He used to live here in Dar es Salaam. He visited us there in Musoma. He gave me a gift of 10,000 shillings. It was a lot of money in that time that I've ever held in my life at that time. I kept it well, and such that I will be able to rent. When I took care of it, after five weeks, it has been guarded at a very safe place. I will never forget that thing. One day I was passing in town, and I found my fellow pastor of another church. And he also has passed away. I don't know why they die quickly that, as such. I don't know where they go. I'm so amazed at them. He was called Joshua Dutch. I passed along the way driving my bike called the Lale. There I go with my bike. 
And I found this, that's the Joshua. He's being driven out of the place where he lived. He's being told, get out, because he failed to pay for the house, the rental, which was 6,000 shillings. He was being cast out, the servant of God. His sofas, his fridges, and all of his furniture, he was being cast out. And I, I had nothing. I had no bed, no chair, no mat. I was just there. I had one mattress, which was very poor quality, and within it, it had bugs. And at night, they come out and they bite you all over the body. You, you, you're giving up, but you drink tea. You're giving up, and you drink tea. You do not give up. There are great things which are ahead of you. God has prepared great things, good things. There's a gift which God will surprise you with after a few days. Those who believe that, say, Amen, 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 Amen. A poor quality mattress. Now, there are bugs within the mattress. That is, when you sleep on it. Remember, there are like 10 of us who are sleeping on it. We turn it in such a way so that you put your leg, your head, and your waist, and the lower part of your body is off the mattress. Yes. You put your head on the mattress, your ribs, and your midsection downwards is off the bed. I already bid farewell to my home. They know that the servant of God has already gone to Musoma and they don't know what he's doing there. He's the voice of one in the wilderness. All who have become victorious have had to fight first. All who rejoice had once cried. Those who are despised will laugh. That is why I said, you who are speaking much, were you there when Goliath came with his weapons and I smote him, were you there? Were you there? You cannot possess without contending. Repeat these words, you cannot possess without contending. And God, before he uses you, first he prepares you. He allows you to go through valleys. He allows you to go through pitch until you think, is really God with me or is he not? You say, God, where are you? Speak to me in dreams he doesn't speak. You say, God, at least let me dream today. You do not dream. You say, Lord, can I at least give me one, a person to give me a thousand shillings? They do not. You ask God, are you there? Are you not? It's quiet. It's quiet. God is testing you. If I keep quiet, will you continue with me? When I found that God was quiet, I kept pursuing after him. When I was hurt, I was determined to follow after him. Even when I cried, even when I slept hungry, I continued to follow after him. And today I follow him with all joy, in the good times, in hardship, I follow him. He is God of mercy. And he will help you. He will hold you by the right hand of his righteousness. And those who are angry at you will be scattered abroad. And those who contend with you will be as naught. Those who made war against you, you will not see them anymore, says the Lord of hosts. So many people would wish to imitate your success. But the capacity the ability to imitate success should also be the ability to imitate your suffering. If you want to imitate my prosperity, my success, also imitate my suffering. That is why you saw my friend that day, when we were launching our helicopter, he decided to interfere. But later, he decided to retreat. He saw that it was better for him to do so. You cannot imitate a person there are people with grace. They've been called by God for a time as such. God calls people for times as those. Amen, 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 amen. Let me finish with that case study. I was passing there and I found Pastor Joshua was in debt of 6,000 shillings. And at that time he had gone to the United Kingdom to study. When we began with, to work, there came about a person called Don Double. He said, let me take you to study in the United Kingdom so that you can better serve the Lord. My friends went, and I said, I'm not leaving here. They went to the United Kingdom. They came back with fridges, with beds, but nowhere to put them. So they came back the year previous year, and now the beds and the fridges were outside. They were being chased out. I passed by, and I said to them, sorry, my friend. He was crying with his wife. We have been ashamed. We have been put to shame. I said, at home, I only have 10,000 shillings, which has been put 
for several months somewhere. Let me go bring it for you. So I went home and I took the 10,000 shillings. I was crying. I was crying that the servant of God cannot be put to shame as such. He's not of my church. He's not of my religion, the same religious line. But I went and I gave him the 10,000 to the men of God. I gave it to him. He has a big house. It's got like six bedrooms. It's big. And I was paying rent for his house. And I have a one bedroom unit. Do not think that in giving, it means that a person has a lot. I have a bicycle. I go back to my money, to my people. And I'm going to give it to him away. He said to me, where did you get such big money? And I have my secret at heart. I know that this I've kept it for enough months. It's been kept somewhere and I gave it to him. Unfortunately, he died before his time. He died. But what I'm showing you is, I'm showing you this. There's a time when God will allow hardship so that he can fix you. All people who are used by God were prepared. The Israelites, before they entered into the promised land, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. God allows one to be prepared so that he can prepare you well. He will deal with you. Therefore, what took place is that while Satan and demons are entering into the powers of, of mankind and becoming man, God himself he reveals the people that he's called for his purpose and for a time is this and for a time is this. Therefore, there will be an encounter. There will be an encounter between the powers of darkness and the power of the kingdom of God. There will be an encounter of power. There will be an encounter of power here on earth between demons who have purpose to become human beings and you and people of God who have become human beings face to face eye to eye muscle to muscle it will be and that is when you see Satan is being stuck and being destroyed wide openly and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of the Lord before Jesus Christ comes to rapture his church say amen